everyone, and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to be talking about ASP.NET Core Identity. So before we actually start using ASP.NET Core Identity, I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a primer on what it is for, because there could be a lot of confusion about what ASP.NET Core Identity does and why you need it. So first, you need to understand that ASP.NET Core Identity can actually be broken down into two different things. One is authentication, which is the process of showing something is true. And then there's authorization, or giving permission to gain access to something. So you can think of the authentication process as figuring out how to determine whether or not somebody is who they say they are. And then the authorization part is determining whether or not that person should actually have access to that particular entity within your application. So say, for example, you have your user and a web application. But before that user goes and tries to access your web application, you would like to put some sort of security system in place to make sure that that user should be able to access your application. So how do you do this? Well, the user can go ask another area of your application. So maybe you've got a special section of your web application specifically designed to help authenticate the user or they can actually authenticate themselves through Active Directory or a domain controller. And then there's also the possibility that they use OAuth or using some third-party authentication service like Google Plus or Facebook or Twitter. Now, when the user goes and talks to one of these different sources to authenticate themselves, they're going to be given back a claim or a set of claims, okay? And this whole process, again, is called authentication where they go and ask one of these services to authenticate and say who they are, and then they get back that claim that determines who they are, that they can use that claim then at some other location that says that they are, you know, either their first name, last name, or some other piece of information. So now that they've been authenticated, now they can take that authentication claim and pass it along through whatever locking mechanism is, right? whatever this firewall is or whatever this padlock is. And that claim then unlocks the padlock and allows them through. And this is called the authorization process. They're using the claim to say, I am allowed to have access to this section of the application. And so they go on through and of course they get the candy, right? They get whatever the good stuff is that's on your website that you want to have locked down. So understand that the authentication part is just the process of them identifying who they are. And then the authorization process is a locking mechanism to make sure that only those people who should have access will get access. So let's talk about the authentication mechanism that is built into ASP.NET Core Identity. Now this is not going over the OAuth where you can use you know, Facebook or Twitter or one of those other third parties to do the authentication process for you. This is actually where you have on your own web application an authentication process for the user to use, uh, like a username and a password to log in. So your user needs some sort of class to help identify what a user is. We need to define what is a user in your application. And there is already a base class in ASP.NET Core Identity called Identity User. Now you don't want to expose Identity User directly and say that this, uh, that all of your users are called Identity User because that's actually a base class that you should be using. So you want to wrap Identity User in some other class. You need to inherit from Identity User. And typically, especially by default, this will usually be called an application user. You could call it whatever you want. You could say Contoso user or whatever your company name is user uh, or whatever you'd like, just as long as there is some sort of entity that is being derived from the identity user class. Now, once we have this identity user class or this application user class, uh, we need to store it somewhere. We need some sort of user persistence, some sort of database uh, that, that usually it's typically a database that manages where the users are stored at, all the different users that might be allowed to be authenticated through the process. 
So we have a database, and this is the user persistence. And then we also need to have some sort of user management, some sort of way of allowing the user to log in and log out and manage those claims. So one side is persisting the data, the other side is the actual interaction with the user. On the user persistence side, we have something called an identity DB context of type T. And you'll notice that DB context, that probably sounds very familiar by now, since we've been working with entity framework, you should know that a DB context is essentially that class that helps us set up the schema of the database and what all the different tables are. And it helps us to interact with a relational database to get our different classes and entities. Now, at identity DB context is more specifically designed for ASP.NET Core identity. And we actually pass along an instance of, uh, or we pass along as a type parameter, the uh, application user or whatever the class is that is based off of identity user as the T parameter as that type parameter to identity DB context and we'll get into that a little bit later on when we actually set up the authentication process in ASP.NET Core identity but I just kind of wanted to go over that real quick now there's also something called a user store which also is of a type T it needs some sort of type parameter which is also going to be the identity user class so both the identity DB context and the user store are using whatever this class is that implements identity user. Now on the user management side, we have a class called sign in manager, and this is going to manage the actual login and log out of your users. So it's essentially that process to determine whether or not the user is logged in or is not logged in and, you know, pull up some information about that user, like maybe an ID or whatnot. Then there's the user manager class and the user manager class, it works hand in hand with the user store class in order to actually determine what the claims are that that user should have. And once again, the signed in manager and the user manager are going to be using the identity user class or whatever class uh, that you have that is utilizing this identity user base class. So that's a little bit about the authentication process. Now let's talk about the authorization. So let's say that your user has been properly authenticated and now they've got a series of claims. They've got perhaps a birth date claim, they have an employee number claim, and they have a sales department claim. So they have all these different claims associated with that particular user that's been logged in and authenticated. Now, why would they need each one of these claims? Well, it entirely depends upon where that user is trying to go. If say, for example, they're trying to go to a website that you've set up called lonelyhearts.com, and it's really only supposed to be 18 years or older that have access to this website, well, you should be checking their birth date to make sure that they are 18 years or older. Then when it comes to the employees section of our Contosa website, we may want to check and make sure that that claim or that user has some sort of employee number claim before we're going to allow them into the employees section. Remember, some websites, some business enterprise applications and websites may have a regular user or customer section and they might have an employees section. And when that user logs in, maybe you want the all employees and users to log in through the same uh, login process but only employees will be granted an employee number, and that's what would give them access to the employees section. Then if this user is a member of the sales department, if they have a sales department claim, then they would have access to a subsection within your application that would be the sales department section of the employees section. So having one of these claims really helps to determine what type of access should the user have? Do they have an employee number? If they do, then let them in. If they, uh, you know, let them into the employees section. If they don't, then don't let them in. That sort of thing. And you can really add your own custom claims at any point during this process. You can actually add claims to that user. So hopefully you understand the difference between authentication and authorization at this point. And so the next video, we're gonna actually start to implement ASP.NET Core Identity. We're gonna install it in our application and we're gonna do some configuring of it before we begin. So I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video where we begin that process.